Hey guys, Nipper the Crab here. Some of you guys know me as Mr. Eric. Well, I just want to go ahead and start off by saying that we miss you very, very much. And I hope that you guys are continuing to practice safety precautions during this time that we're all experiencing, but we're all in this together. And I know that we will soon reunite, sooner, sooner than later. But we got to continue to practice safety precautions, okay? And so now I thought I would read a story. Following the story, Miss Rochelle is going to lead you in a little simple fish craft that you guys can do from home. Following that, we're gonna conclude this video with Tickly the Octopus reading his story. So let's go ahead and start with my story, Nipper the Crab, and that story is called Clumsy Crab. Now this story was written by Ruth Galloway and also illustrated by Ruth Galloway. Now you can see all the colors at the very bottom of the ocean. Look how beautiful that looks. Clumsy Crab, again, by Ruth Galloway, illustrated by Ruth Galloway, published by Tiger Tales. Nipper the Crab hated his huge, clumsy claws. Snip, snap, clip, clap. No matter how hard he tried, they always got in the way. Look at his claws. They're about the size of his body. Wow. His eyes are really small, though. Look at those little tiny eyes. None of his friends had clumsy claws. He wished he had tickly tentacles like octopus and jellyfish or flippity fins like turtle and the fish. There, there are all his friends. He looks sad. They're all smiling. They don't seem too bothered by it. They just want to have a good time. One day, Nipper was playing catch the bubble. There's the bubble with his friends. What do you think is going to happen? Nice guess. Let's find out. Pop! His clumsy claws burst the bubble. They couldn't play that game anymore, so they play tag instead. Nipper scuttled off sideways, but one of his clumsy claws got in the way. Again, there he goes. His friends are very supportive, can't you tell? They're okay with it. They're like, let's just keep playing something else that we can all enjoy. But he still seems a little upset about his claws. Whoa, whoa! Nipper slipped and stumbled, tripped and tumbled until, until what? Until what? He was buried up to his eyes in sand. Turtle came to dig him out. That's a good pal. Everyone decided to play hide and seek. Nipper climbed into a big clam. There's that clam shell and pulled it shut. Now, I would definitely do something like that. Smart place to hide. But a little dark inside. It was perfect hiding place until. Uh, until what? Until what? What do you think? Smash! <gasps> Nipper's clumsy claws shatter the shell into hundreds of tiny pieces. Look, all over the sand. Ouch, he cried, help! If I didn't have these clumsy claws, I wouldn't break everything, and I'd be good at hide and seek, said Nipper. Don't worry, Nipper, said the others. We'll hide, and you find us. Good thinking. Again, good friends, good friends. Nipper counted to 10, then set off to find his friends. He scuttled through the sand and found Turtle. There's Turtle. You see his shell under the sand? Sort of camouflage. Not bad for a turtle. He shuffled under the shells and found jellyfish. And he searched up and down, in and out, all around the rocks. But he couldn't find octopus anywhere. There's some seaweed. I see something a little odd about that seaweed. See that color? Hmm. Let's see. Suddenly, everyone heard a cry. Octopus was tangled up tightly in some seaweed. Help, help! Octopus squirmed and squiggled and wriggled and jiggled. Turtle and jellyfish tried to help, but the knots just got tighter and tighter. <gasps> Nipper had an idea. Oh, boys and girls, I think Nipper might actually put his claws to good use. Nipper snipped at the seaweed with his claws faster, and Nipper danced around the clump of seaweed, and snipping and snapping, clipping and clapping. <gasps> His claws moved quickly, slashing and slicing, shredding and dicing, until the sea was filled with tiny pieces of swirling seaweed. Good job, yay! Octopus was finally free. Thank you, Nipper. You're a clever crab, he cheered. Nipper waved his claws happily at last. He knew how useful they could be. And they all lived happily ever after. The end. That's pretty awesome. See, the claws worked for something, 
So he just had to be a little bit positive and he knew that some, someday those claws would come in handy. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and do a song that kind of relates back to Nipper's little claw. So let's get our claws out. All right, and it's gonna go to the tune of Farah Jaka. So go ahead and follow along. We're gonna do it two times. Crabs are crawling, crabs are crawling on the rocks, on the rocks. Watch out for their pinchers, watch out for their pinchers. Snap, 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 snap. Crabs are crawling, crabs are crawling on the rocks, on the rocks. Watch out for their pinchers, watch out for their pinchers. Snap, 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 snap. Good job, boys and girls. Thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed that story. Now go ahead and remember, stay tuned, because Mr. Shell is up next with the fish craft. Hello, everyone. My name is Ms. Rochelle, and today we'll be creating a paper plate fish craft. Join me in the art studio, and we'll get started. For this craft, you'll need colored construction paper, white paper, paint or markers, glue, scissors, black marker, pencil, paper plate, and a one and a half inch circular template. The first step is taking your paint and coloring your paper plate. After you paint your paper plate, you're gonna wait for it to fully dry, and then you'll have a nice dried paper plate. The next step is cutting the mouth for the fish. You're gonna take your scissors and cut a triangle out. In that triangle, we're gonna use it as the fish's tail. So you take some glue, just like this, and attach it to the paper plate. And there you have the tail for your fish. To create the eye for the fish, I use the cap of the glue to draw the circle. And just cut it out. And I take the marker to color in the fish's eye. And take the glue. And glue the eye right above the mouth, like so. And there we have our eye for our fish. To create the scales for the fish, I used a one and a half inch circular template. I traced around the template to create the circle for the fish's scale. Then you're going to cut out each scale. You need to cut out a total of 15 using the different colors you have. Then once you cut out all 15, you have this. The last step is putting the scales on our fish. You're going to take each circle and fold it in half. You glue the bottom like this and attach it to the fish about halfway through the fish, the last half. What you're going to do is for the first row, you're going to have five scales. And place them next to each other. So we'll have five in the first row, then four, three, two, and one, until your fish is done. Then for the second row, you start a little bit past 
this first one to about right here. Then you continue all the way down until you have four scales in this row. And just keep repeating until you're done. When you place all your scales on your fish, it will look like this. Thank you for joining me in creating a craft. Stay tuned for the Tickly Octopus. Thank you so much, Miss Rochelle, for that wonderful craft. I hope you guys enjoyed. Thank you again, I'm Tickly Octopus. Some of you guys know me as Mr. Eric, still. So now I'm gonna go ahead and read my story. I hope you also enjoyed Clumsy Crab, but now I'm gonna go ahead and read my story. And it is called Tickly Octopus, also written and illustrated by Ruth Galloway and published by Tiger Tales. There I am. Ooh, more color. Look how beautiful that is, guys. Down in the ocean, among the swirling seaweed and the colorful coral, lived a tickly octopus. Hello. He had a twisty, twirly arms, and he loved to use them to tickle. When octopus tickled the little fish, they jumped and jiggled and wriggled and giggled. Ha ha! They thought tickling was tons of fun. Didn't bother them none. Not one bit. But most of the creatures found his tickling tiresome. What? Octopus tickled Sea Star and made her squirm. Stop it! She squeaked. Octopus tickled clickety clackety crab. And crab tripped and tumbled into the sand. Go away! He snapped. You remember Crab, that's Nipper, our friend, the Crab. He didn't like that so much, though. But I'm Tickly Octopus, and I'm really good at tickling, said Octopus sadly. <laughs> and he swam off to tickle the wriggly, giggly fish again, because they enjoyed it. One day, Octopus saw Oyster snoozing among the seashells. He couldn't resist giving her one teeny tiny tickle. There she is asleep <gasps> with her little pearl. She has a little pearl inside. But Oyster woke with a jump and dropped her precious pearl. Ping, bip, boing! It bounced over the rocks and was swept away from the current. Oh no, gasped Octopus. Poor Oyster was very upset. I'm so sorry, said Octopus. I'll get it back for you. Let's see what he's going to do. Octopus raced through the water with a whoosh and a swoosh. Whee! He said, I never knew I could be super speedy. Whoosh! Swimming down the ocean. Now it's dark. <gasps> Ooh. Octopus followed the pearl as it tumbled to the bottom of the sea. Wow, he said. I never knew I could swim so deep. He's at the very bottom. It just gets darker and darker and darker. At last, Octopus reached for the pearl, but plink, plunk, plunk. <gasps> Oyster's precious pearl bounced over the rocks and slipped through a small gap in the ocean floor. Octopus squished and squashed and heaved and squeezed and managed to push his rubbery body through the gap. Oh, he said, I never knew I could be so squishy. He's learning a lot of things about himself. Wow. Uh oh, it's even darker now. He's even further deep. There glinting in the darkness was the smooth and shiny pearl, but just behind it, uh oh, was a fierce eel. There's the eel. Yikes, squeaked Octopus. He quickly picked up the pearl and sped away. Give me that pearl, roared the eel. Octopus huffed and puffed as the eel chased him. He'd swam such a long time and he was very tired. The eel was getting closer and closer. With a spurt and a squirt, a belch and a squelch, Octopus sprayed a cloud of black ink. The eel couldn't see a thing. Ooh, whoa. Oh my, said Octopus. I never knew I could be so inky. And he danced happily back to Oyster. Oyster was delighted to get her pearl back. Woo! I promise I won't ever tickle you again, Octopus said. I found a lot of other things I'm good at doing. From now on, I'm going to be a speedy, deep sea, squishy ink octopus. And I'll still be a little tickly too. <laughs>
the end. Cool. Just sounds like Octopus likes to have a good time, don't we all? All right, so now I have another song that I want to sing with you guys. All right, so go ahead and follow along. And it's about octopuses and their eight, remember eight? Remember that, tentacles. All right. Once I saw an octopus in the deep blue sea. I called out, Mr. Octopus, hey, come and swim with me. Out came his tentacles so very long and straight. One and two and three and four, five, six, seven, eight. Good job. Now wiggle those little tentacles, wiggle them. Very nice, boys and girls. Well, thank you so much for watching. I had such a great, great time, and I hope you did too. So again, we will definitely see each other soon. We miss you very much. On behalf of Mr. Eric, Mr. Nipper the Crab, myself, Tickly Octopus, and Miss Rochelle, we bid you farewell for now. All right, thank you guys so much, and enjoy your day. Take care. Bye.